For USCfootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Shotgun Spratling for instant analysis of USC's Tuesday practice of Notre Dame week. And Shotgun, if for some reason we forgot who USC was going to play on Saturday, I think our ears would have given us a clue. How many times do you think we heard I'm shipping up to Boston during practice today? I don't know. We're shipping out to Chicago on Friday. But <laughs> yes, many, many times it was played. Uh, Dante Williams actually came over and said, turn it up, turn it all the way up. I want it as loud as can be, basically, uh, in some different different words there. But um, you know, they want that noise. They wanted to be used to it. And Dante Williams said afterwards when he was asked about the, the, the song being played and the different the Notre Dame band being played, he said, I want them to get there and feel like it's already used to it. And you just kind of uh, you know, zone out uh, from that noise and don't really uh, pay any attention to it. So you just want to be used to it. And that's something USC has done every time they've gone to Notre Dame. It's not something new necessarily there. Uh, but I, I think that USC is putting that effort in to knowing that Notre Dame is a big rivalry week and you know, talking to the players, they know the, uh, impl- um, know the impact of this game and what it can mean for the rest of the season. And you know, they're trying to, trying to turn up the intensity a little bit. And I think so that's what we saw a little bit from this practice, from talking with some of the, the players and coaches on the offensive side was that it wasn't intense enough in the past. And that's one of the things they've tried to make a change with during this bye week. And we did see that early, but then when they went into their install periods, pretty, you know, the, the energy level dropped down once again. So that's something where I think they need to be able to ratchet it back up and have some competition periods later in practice to keep that, you know, keep that energy going so that you're getting a good look during scout team, getting a good look when you're doing those install and finding out and going game speed. And that was something Keenan Slovis said, I asked him uh, about this week of practice. He said, we got to go game speed during, um, we got to go full speed during our scout team periods. And that's something that multiple people mentioned it was the scout team period not doing enough. Uh, so that's something that to, interesting to keep an eye on. Obviously, they've been really, they've been really uh, limited with some of the positions, especially that nose tackle position yeah. when you're on scout team. And you know, Solomon Tulela Pupu is having to play some defensive line right now on scout team. You're not going to get a true look from from guys completely out of position, but they need to be attacking it a little bit harder. And that's something we haven't necessarily seen, even though they mentioned it. I didn't necessarily see it today like something that you felt like, oh, this is much different either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that scout team issue we've heard from a couple of USC's coaches for the last couple of weeks and how that uh, maybe contributed to them not being as prepared when game day came around. How do you fix that going forward, especially with the depth issues that you just mentioned? you, you got to try to get healthy. That's one. Uh, but just you got to attack it. It's got to be a competition period. You know, if you're a scout team guy, you got to be looking like these are my reps. These are my opportunity to go against a one. That's how I get better if I'm a freshman. If I'm going against, you know, that left tackle or right tackle or, or you know, I'm a, you know, a, a freshman left tackle and I'm going against Drake Jackson or Tuli Tuli Those are great opportunities to get better. And they're not attacking those in that way. And I think that's one of the biggest issues right now for USC and that preparation that they're having is, and part of it is the, the depth issues. And, hey, sometimes Toa Lobanon has been playing defensive tackle for, for the scout team. But, you know, every single rep, you need to make the most of it. And I don't think that they've done that to the best of their ability so far. And I think that's been one of the issues. Mm-hmm. We got to talk to Dante Williams after practice today. He gave some injury updates. No new updates on Michael Trigg. He's still rehabbing. Uh, Jackson Dart did some more teamwork today, but he's still not medically cleared, so they're still waiting for that. But Jackson Dart said after practice this is the most comfortable he's felt uh, since the injury. So he looks like he's progressing there, and it looked like that today. Yeah, I, I think that's the most interesting thing is that he is taking a step forward. He was doing mostly scout team, or excuse me, skeleton team work, pass skeleton, seven on seven, uh, where there's no linemen to actually back up into you and possibly bump you or anything. Today, uh, he was doing more teamwork. Now, that's scout team work, and there wasn't, you know, that pass rush wasn't really getting there in the backfield, but just adding a little bit more. And on the op- opposite side of the ball, Ishmael Sopcher, similar pattern, you know, adding a little bit more each week. Uh, last week, we saw him get some team reps. Today, we actually saw him get some first team reps. Yeah. Uh, so that's something to, to keep an eye on. I asked Dante Williams what he could add whenever they are to get able to get him back uh, to be a, you know, what he can. Con- what he can contribute to the team. Uh, I mean, he said, I mean, one, he's just huge. He's a massive dude, but he's also athletic. So just adding some more athleticism to that, that defensive tackle position, that nose tackle position would be an addition there, as well as the mass that he would, they would have with an extra, you know, true nose tackle on the roster. Mm-hmm. I also asked Williams what he took away from USC's developmental scrimmage that they had on Thursday during the bye week, and he said he wasn't there. He was on the recruiting trail, but he must have watched the tape at least five to ten times, he said. Uh, and then I followed up with, were there any changes that you want to make from what you saw? And he kind of pointed to today's practice. Did we see changes today? 
I mean, Ishmael Sasha was a guy that was going to be in that developmental scrimmage. We haven't necessarily heard an update on how he did in that scrimmage. But, again, we did see him do some, have some first-team reps today. A lot of mixing and matching with the defense, and I think that's part of it. Uh, I think you saw a guy like Jalen Smith, uh, Kalen Bullock. Those guys got some first-team reps. Now, they're not taking all the first-team reps, but getting some there. And I think that's also just to put some pressure on some of those older guys that haven't performed up to their capabilities uh, you know, all the time this season. So I, I think you're trying to light a fire on those veteran guys, but also say, hey, we saw what you did last week. You made a, a positive impact in that scrimmage. We're going to give you some extra opportunities and see if you can earn some going into Saturday's game. And then maybe that you, know, you get five reps, you get 10 reps, you get 15 reps. And if you do well there, you turn that into five more the next week or 10 more the next week. So I, I think that's what you're looking for out of those young guys that continue to develop and at this halfway point a lot of times now it's usually a little bit later in the season but a lot of times I always see freshmen in college doesn't matter what sport it is but you get to about the two-thirds point of a season and that's normally about when the high school season ends in whatever sport it is and you see guys either lock in and now they've kind of figured out they figured out the speed they figured out the quickness everything and they take off or they hit a wall and, you know, it's just a longer season, you know, it's a more wear and tear, and they kind of wear down at the end of the season. So, you know, we're not quite at that point where I expect that from some of the freshmen, but we might see some of those guys kind of start taking off now with this bye week and some extra opportunities. Mm -hmm. I spoke with USC offensive line coach Clay McGuire today, and he scouted Notre Dame and said they might be the, the biggest interior defensive line they face all season. Now, he said you don't really change your DNA based on opponent, but how, does that impact USC's game plan at all? Sure. I mean, it changes what you're going to do, whether you're going to double team on a nose tackle. If you're playing, playing Washington State and their nose tackle, or you're playing USC and their nose tackle is 270 pounds, you don't necessarily have to double team on that guy versus a 330 pound guy. If you want to get to the next level, you can send a guy through if you're getting, you know, being able to get a block with one guy. So it changes some things that you do there. But I, I think the, the strength of USC's offensive line has been those interior guys. You got three veterans in there with Andrew Voorhees, Liam Jimmins at the two guard positions, and Brett Nealon in the Center position so if they can hold their own you know I think that that's actually a plus for USC that the strength of the other team is where they already have their strength as well so I, I think USC still got to watch out for the edge rushers Notre Dame always has some some really good guys coming off the edge but I, I think it's a, a plus for USC that you know the opponent's strength is one of their strengths as well and and how they can match up will you know might be a determining factor in how well they can run the ball and how well the offense can move as a whole mm -hmm. Well, Shaka, any final thoughts? I'm proud of you for doing instant on a day where you're mourning the loss of the Braves today. So any final thoughts before we wrap this one up? Just had to bring that up, didn't you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, I, I think the, the interesting thing was with Michael Trigg uh, from t talking to Seth Dagey, um, he said that he's a genetic freak is what he called him, and he said it's not. It's like he ha he's not even injured. Obviously, there's still some damage and stuff in there, but he's recovering pretty quickly. So we'll see where that takes him and where he's at later in the season. But I, I, I'm curious to see – how this team responds, they've identified an issue. Mm. Hey, we're not, we're not practicing hard enough, and we're not having a, enough intensity in our scout team periods. But didn't necessarily see a huge pickup there. Now, we did see some of the coaches. Daigie was one of the guys that was a little bit more vocal. They were trying to attack, you know, be more aggressive with things and yelling about being full speed. But I still felt it was kind of, you know, kind of a walkthrough type of period as they were installing a lot of stuff and then trying to, you know, going from install and doing it real slow and then trying to put it into, into effect in the scout team. But that's something to keep an eye on as we go forward, as that's something they've now identified. Yeah. How do they continue to attack it and does it get better? And does that prepare them better? For you know, a different, little bit different trip going to Notre Dame is always a little bit different. Different time zones, a little bit longer flight. Uh, but Dante Williams said it's similar to, to what they do. They try to adjust the guys' bodies this week leading up, uh, but they should be ready for, to, to go on Saturday. And he said, you know, when the lights come on, uh, you know, basically you, you see, you hear the music and hear everything else. It's go time. So I, I think uh, you're going to see the players ready to go then. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, that's going to wrap it up for USC's Tuesday practice of Notre Dame week. For Shotgun Spratling, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.